What's going on guys? Um, so right now we're at a call. A uh, new customer wanting a second opinion. The last people that was out said they found a, a leak. So we're gonna check this system over and see if we can't find it. So just going around here. So I, turned, I already turned this one off, it's clicking. You can definitely tell it's out of refrigerant. Um, it's got my probe hooked up. It's showing about 30 PSI left in it. So it's, it's leaked it almost all the way out. So the last people here said that they found the leak in the outdoor unit. Never go by what the last person said. Do your own full inspection. But I will start out here. So you always want to look for any type of oil anywhere on the system. Look on the lines. Look at all the joints. We can take the top off in a minute. And we'll check oil around the, the coil. See if we see any uh, oil settling anywhere where it shouldn't be. And then if I, if I don't visually see it pretty soon, you know, pretty quick, I'll put some nitrogen in it, get it filled up to maybe 250, 300 PSI, use some soap bubbles if I can't hear it, usually that'll, it'll stand out pretty quick that way. So we'll get started. All right, so just got the top off and first impression, as soon as you open it, lots of oil laying around everywhere. If you look up at the fan shroud, a lot of oil. So I do believe this is going to be in, in here somewhere. All of these lines super oily. So the, um, the leak is definitely out here somewhere. So I'm going to, I don't usually like to use a, a leak, leak detector. I have one of the, the build piece heated diodes I really like. But uh, outside it usually picks up a little too much of the, where you've attached gauges, where it's, you know, where you, where you have attached and unattached all your gauges so it, it, it's not usually very accurate so I like to use bubbles or uh, nitrogen is the best way to do it when it's an uh, outdoor unit so I'm gonna get some uh, nitrogen put in it and then hopefully we can find it pretty quick and see what the next step is all right so I went ahead and just I seen a good bit of oil all over these these little loops um, I went ahead and sprayed some bubbles on it and a really good way to do it so you don't use so much is you'll spray right on it's about out now if you spray on it when it's liquid it's not real sudsy like that but it'll it'll run down every single joint and it'll just keep dripping so make you a few squirts the top two or three and it'll run all the way down for you I soaked all this up you didn't really see nothing but there's only about 30 psi on the system so I'm gonna put some nitrogen in it now and respray it with a a little bit more bubbles and see if we can't find this thing. All right, got some nitrogen on it. Have located the leak. Um, if we look right here into this corner, you can see the crack in that top. Spray a little bit on it. And there it is. So I got some good news to tell them. Um, they were the last people that was out was quoted a whole new system um then gave an, uh, they also gave her a price they said if it's in the coil outside it's it'll be just uh as about the same price to just go ahead and replace the whole outdoor unit so i would imagine the guy just came out seen the oil and just said hey it's leaking out here we need to replace it so um i've checked everywhere else don't really see any other leaks anywhere else um so i'm going to get this get the okay to go ahead and get this welded up and filled up and I'll film it. All right, just got to go ahead to get this thing repaired. So um, I'm gonna get started. First thing, I'm draining the, the nitrogen back out of it. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this welded up, then pressure test it, pull up a good vacuum, then add about four pounds of refrigerant. All right, when, when soldering any of these types of loops or anything um, like this, you always wanna run really low heat on your torch. You have your torch too high, you're gonna blow holes through through the whole thing and it's going to be a disaster so just make sure you have lower heat when you're doing this type of uh, solder. Also make sure that your valves, uh, the Schroeder valves are taken out or you have a hose uh, at the service ports just constantly draining if you had because once you start heating this up it is going to start pressurizing um, all that refrigerant that's in there is going to start building pressure when it heats so just make sure you got your service port valves opened uh, the shredder valves taken out
and definitely don't breathe this because it will choke you to death. It looks like that should have got it. Just gonna put a little bit more just to be safe. some nitrogen and make sure there's no leak. Alright, adding the nitrogen right now, I'm going to go ahead and spray it again just to make sure everything looks okay. Let it cool off some. perfect world you'd want to let this cool off a good bit so your 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 suds doesn't uh, just dissolve and evaporate it because of the heat so I'm gonna let this cool off a little more then spray some more bubbles just to be a hundred percent but it is looking pretty good all right so I'm gonna let it start evening out got some nitrogen put in it to check for a leak um, and another tip real quick whenever you're adding nitrogen to find a leak you always want to just put about two 250 at the most in it uh, there's been a couple instances where I have threw about four, 450 in them, and it will actually can clog a tiny leak with all that pressure, and it won't show up. So make sure you're around 200 whenever you do this, just to be safe. And you should let it set at 200, and if it still doesn't, if it's not showing a leak, then you can throw in a little more. But starting out, make sure you're about 200. All right, this thing's been setting for probably. 15 minutes at the least not really moving at all so it's been bouncing back and forth between 0.2 and 0.3 um, it looks like it's good to go so we're going to start the vacuum all right we got the vacuum set up um, <clears throat> can't use my probes no more so yeah just just a quick side note if you're thinking about getting any type of probes these field piece ones are absolutely awesome so i would highly recommend them still need to keep you a four port manifold uh, to do any type of vacuuming um, adding nitrogen I do have a setup though that I can post in the next in another video if y'all would like to show how I use my probes uh, to charge <clears throat> um, but when you hook up after doing this uh, soldering make sure you put your valve cores back in that's a big mistake I've done it several times trying to be in too big of a hurry so make sure you get those in and I'm gonna get the vacuum started and while it's running we can put this unit back together and give it about or however long it takes to get the 500 as close as you can when you're when you're pulling a vacuum on a system and you have your valves open to where it's pulling from the compressor too it's very very hard to get it to 500 microns um, so around six is usually where I get to and that can sometimes take you know 45 minutes to an hour so you want to make sure it's got a really good deep vacuum, but trying to get to 500 on an open system, pulling from into the compressor and everything, it's almost impossible to do. But if you can get it to six, maybe start dropping a little below six, you know there's no leak and it's it's going to uh, be fine. So I'm going to get the vacuum started now. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. We're down to 740 and dropping. Um, it'll slow back up in a minute and then start sitting there for a good while. Um, that's where we're at right now. It's probably going to be at least another 30, 30 minutes or so, and we should be where we want to be. All right, so we got the, the vacuum pulled down to about 600 microns, about as, about as close as we could get without you know being here for four hours. So um, all together, it was about 50 minutes of vacuum time. And now we're going to add the refrigerant. And this system holds three pounds 15 ounces so four pounds and then probably five or six ounces for the for the line we'll get all that dialed in suction line make sure this is zeroed out 
We're gonna open up our refrigerant. Refrigerant, and just open up your suction side. So we got just uh, liquid. All right, here we go. I'll get it to about four pounds and then we'll, uh, I'll be back so we can get this unit started up. All right, so I went to about four pounds, four ounces on there. It's time to get it started up. bit more um, I'm gonna let it get evened out and be right back all right this thing's dropping pretty quick so we're gonna add us some more refrigerant real quick I get my take about a pound maybe a little more than a pound over the manufacturer specs let this run for a few minutes all right I hadn't touched it since last time five pounds one ounce and it looks like it's gonna be dead on the money right here I got our, we got our sub cooling 10.7 um, usually these Linux systems are dead on around between 10 and 12 so if you can get it anywhere like that then you're gonna be pretty good <clears throat> my um, Suction line temperature is still dropping. You want to see that in the 50s. Um, but this is a TXV system, so we're going to run off sub cooling. That's, that's looking pretty good. All right, so there you go. Um, this is another one of those type of calls where you can really take advantage of another company or someone else being too aggressive, trying to sell stuff, uh, run into it multiple times a week. People really try to push for these to, to sell as much as they can because they run a commission type deal with their employer. I have that too, but it always comes back to bite you if, you if you're overly aggressive and you don't try to fix the real problems. So that's just, uh, it, it's my recommendation to you is to make sure to do the job the right way and the, your other good calls where you can make good money will come later. Uh, and it'll, it, you'll always have those also, but this is how you make customers first and make sure you have repeat customers. Um, maintenance plans are always a great thing to try to push more than systems. I mean, it keeps them, keeps us coming in the door. So um, so that's it. This, this system is really running really quiet um, and that's, that's another benefit of being patient, pulling a good vacuum. A vacuum is extremely important. Don't cheap out and uh, you know be worried about time and bleed your system, not vacuum it, or vacuum it for just 15 minutes, it's not enough. And these systems run 10,000 times better pulling a good vacuum on them. So just make sure you do that. Um, be honest with your customers and you'll have a lot of luck. See you next time.